Welcome to our course, Learn to Make iOS Apps Using Swift 2 from Edgeonics. My name is Brett, and I want to give you an introduction to the course. So a little bit of background on me and how I got into programming for iOS. When I started, everything was Objective-C, and this was when the iPhone first came out and apps were available to program against. I've been doing this for clients. I've done it for myself. I've got uh, several apps in the App Store, and it's a variety of apps that I've created. So I'm going to, in this course, kind of run you through with Swift the basics of the language, and we're going to see how to set up with Xcode, what you'll need. You will need a Mac to program with Xcode. There's not really a way to do it without Xcode. There are some workarounds that are out there but you get the full benefit when you're using Xcode on a Mac. So that's what we're gonna be using in this course. So we start off with Swift the language. We do this in the playground. The playground is really an isolated area in Xcode that you can do different kinds of programming without the distractions of a user interface or any of the additional things you get inside of Xcode. So it simplifies that. So we go through, we look at constants and variables, some basic items and Swift. We look at constructs such as conditionals, looping, and then we get into how Swift does arrays and lists and dictionaries. And then we move into the object-oriented aspects of it. So how do you create a class in Swift, add functions to it, and create instances of the class as well. Then we get into building our application. In this course, we're gonna create an application that is basically like a, a mini cash register. So we're at a fruit stand selling fruits and our app is going to calculate the price of fruits based on the quantity we enter and the fruit that we choose. And it's going to save our transactions for us. So we're gonna see how to implement the ability to save those transactions. And then we're gonna have a screen where we can display the history of those transactions. This gets into a lot of building out of the interface, tying the interface into our code on the back end, and saving that data. So we build models or classes to house our transactions and to do different kinds of interactions with the UI. And to save data, we start off with NS user defaults, which is really a lightweight kind of database. And then we move into using plist files where we get to do some file input output. And finally, we wrap the course up with core data, how to set up core data in a new application and use it to save and then retrieve data from your apps. So that is a look at the course overview. And now let's go ahead and jump right into the course.